Well, hi, everybody. It's John Elzinga, and welcome back to It's a Great Day to Serve the Lord. And today I want to talk about man's, mankind's search for meaning. And while you're on the search, everything's better with Jesus. Mankind's search for meaning, and yeah, by the way, everything's better with Jesus. And I want to take us uh, to the desires, the pursuit of King David. And, and, and think about what he was in pursuit of. What was his greatest desire in all of life? And he says in Psalm 63, 1 to 5, You, God, are my God. I earnestly seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land. I have seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen you at church. I've seen you during worship. And beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life itself. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the riches of food. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. My friends, our, our longings and, and cravings grab us. They occupy our minds and our hearts. They fill us with a desire for something that we don't have and make us pursue things that would fulfill and fill that void. I've heard it said that one of the most common things to happen uh, to super goal-oriented people is that if they've had a major goal in their life and finally achieve it, that what follows is a bout of depression. The initial elation wears off and then comes the depression. And this reveals the reality of our human nature, the reality of our world that we live in, the reality of our pursuits is that when we invest ourselves in something so totally and so completely and then achieve it, we're left, for, we're left wanting for something more. We want only more or additional or the next thing. We think that that will bring fulfillment, the fulfillment that we look for. And so this begs the question, friend, what are you, are you in pursuit of? What are your goals in life? What is your greatest longing? Viktor Frankl wrote a little book called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl spent years in the concentration camps in Germany watching people who were waiting to be gassed, waiting to be killed. With little nourishment, they were shriveling up just to become a, a, a portion of who they used to be. And he noticed that those who had a why, those who had a meaning and a purpose for living were those who didn't give up and didn't, didn't give in. And so I ask you again, what are you in pursuit of? What's your primary purpose, your main reason in life for what you do? What fills the void, the longing for joy and happiness and completeness? Is it a building program? Is it the completion of your next project at, at work? Is it a new car or a new home? Is it X amount of money in the bank for security? Is it status and, and waiting for that promotion that you've been working so hard for? There are so many things, so many options that could be the thing that you're in pursuit of. And by the way, these things that I just listed, they're not bad, not at all. But it's the emptiness that comes from achieving them that makes you realize or makes you ask the question, is that all there is? In the 60s, mid-60s, there was a singer by the name of Peggy Lee, and she sang a song by that very title, Is That All There Is? It's a, a very melancholic, very somber song, and very monotone, actually where she literally reads some of the lyrics. And she goes through stanza by stanza of things that she thought that would make her happy, things that would fulfill her. And her ending statement is always, and when that happened, I wondered, is that all there is? Her, her final stanza is a stanza about love, about achieving a, a relationship of love. And she says, and then I fell in love with the most wonderful boy in the world. We take long walks by the river or just sit for hours gazing into each other's eyes. 
We were so very much in love. And then one day, he went away. And I thought I'd die, but I didn't. And then I said to myself, is that all there is to love? This echoes fully the teaching of Solomon. In Ecclesiastes 1, 1 to 4, he, he says, Solomon says, the words of the teacher, son of David, king in Israel, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come, generations go, but the earth remains forever. In other words, you know, there's something missing here. What Peggy Lee and the wisest, richest man in the world, Solomon, both noted, what is that in the normal, everyday pursuit of life, there is this kind of meaningless, something is missing. But what David was implying, what David was saying in his psalm of, of desire, of pursuit of God, is that when God is your pursuit, and now we can also say, when Jesus is your pursuit, when you know the, the person who created you, when you bask in his love, that love is better than life itself. And then you have life in the fullest. You have pursuit of something that never runs dry and a life that is always full. There's a phrase that is often repeated at a church I attend, Seacoast Grace in Cypress, California, and that is, Jesus changes everything. Jesus changes everything. Yes, everything. But now watch this. This doesn't mean we escape from the world and house ourselves in some kind of a spiritual monastery. It doesn't mean that those things that I just listed in life are irrelevant. No. When I say everything is better with Jesus, what I mean is that the building program that you have, which I pursue, I, I pursue it with a desire to glorify God in the way that I do it. I bring Jesus with me as I talk with the contractors and engage with vendors and design it through architects and every other aspect of its construction. Everything's better with Jesus. The completion of that project at work is done in the sense that you know that Jesus would want your employer to be pleased with the way that you do it. The, the new car that you've, you, you just purchased, you, if you only could afford it, with an attitude of gratitude, with an appreciation. A new home is occupied because it's a home where you can raise up your family in the way of the Lord. And having X amount of money in the bank for security is used to keep your family safe, keep you from the distress of maybe compromising in your faith. The promotion that you've been working for is sought under a desire to have a, a greater platform to impact people, to serve them as Jesus would serve them with servant leadership. My dear friend, it's my prayer that you know and will experience the wonderful, wonderful reality that everything is in life is better when Jesus travels with you. And that's your devotions for this week. Um, you, for those that have supported this channel, thank you so much. If you would like to support it, there's a link below. God bless you and remember, it's a great day to serve the Lord.